Chill. Hello there, gang, and welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior, the Earth's mightiest action figure video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. Let's talk about a double review. It's two for one on this one because they both arrived together, and what a perfect pair they are. We've got the 20th anniversary of Marvel Legends, Captain America, and... Helmet Zemo. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful combination of figures we've got here. And also, just, just reminding me about how much I love Marvel Legends, especially this guy, because, oh, oh, oh he's so beautiful. So first of all, let's address Captain America, Steve Rogers. This guy is based, of course, as you know, on the 80th anniversary Alex Ross-style Captain America, but he's been zhuzhed up, and oh boy, has he ever been zhuzhed up. So the big difference, first of all, we've got this brighter color scheme, which is just popping so much more. I sold my 80th Captain America in preparation for this new one coming out because I thought, no, this is this is an upgrade. And he really, really is. A lot of people have mentioned that in the pictures, the blue looks lighter than it actually is in person. But honestly, it's only a negligible amount. I think, would I have liked a more of a sky blue? Maybe, maybe I would have. But what we've got here is perfectly great for Captain America. So no complaints here at all. But then with the actual sculpting of the figure itself, this is just Marvel Legends. You're doing it right. You're doing it so, so right. This is where extra work and extra sculpt makes a figure so beautiful. I can't blame them for reusing the 80th cap because you see we've got the wonderful fish scale chainmail on here. Works perfectly. It's such a gorgeous way of giving cap more depth to the body. It works wonders. Then of course we've got a bit of a controversial kind of move where they gave you the shield with the different effects which are great to have but they've got the holes. You've got the holes in the shield. There's no perfect shield without any holes. Honestly that was going to annoy me but once once I've got it I want to display him with the lightning crackle on here. Why is it there head cannon? I don't know. It just looks cool but just having it there it looks really beautiful. But that's not the only one. You can have these claw slashing type effects like he's fighting Wolverine. I thought for a moment you can also, if you want, have this on here and it looks maybe like the sun is reflecting off the glimmering shield. So if you want to have it so that he's posed just kind of in a nice kind of stance, like he's not in combat, that sort of works. You can fudge it like a glimmer from the sun. So that's kind of cute. And then of course you've got the ricochet bullets as well. And the bullet ricochets, again, they look great. I am sure that there are so many photographers who are just just salivating, licking their lips at the thoughts of the different pictures they can get with this effect. So even though we do sacrifice a complete shield, I don't mind too much because I would always want to display him with some variation of these effects. So that's okay. And then the big difference from the 80th one is we've got the unmasked Steve Rogers head. First of all, lovely touch, which they do with most of their unmasked characters. You've got the cowl, which goes around his neck that you can have down. So canonically, again, it makes perfect sense. He's pulled the cowl down that's around there. It's even got the little wings on there too. A great little touch from Hasbro. So impressed with that. And then the Steve Rogers face sculpting, however they do it, whatever artist they use or how they put it together, it's great. It's, I mean, this is the ultimate blonde haired, blue eyes, Steve Rogers, Captain America. And I respect the fact they haven't been too tempted to try and make him look too much like Chris Evans. They've actually gone, no, 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 this is comic book 616 Captain America and he looks according to that and it works. It works really, really great with a stoic, determined kind of expression. Nothing derpy, nothing silly, not like not too grimacing angry either. So if you want to have him in just a normal kind of stance, you can do. But if you want to have him in a battle pose, that works as well. It's a great catch-all kind of effect. And then the actual Captain America head itself with the mask on. I think that's a great one, which is quite stylized as well. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Captain America movie from 1990, which to be fair is best left forgotten. But the mask itself looks fine. I promise the ears aren't rubber. That's what they did in the 1990 movie. He had rubber ears so that his normal ones are inside the mask, as was the style at the time, I suppose. But this is 
great. It looks quite retro, very small sort of eye holes. But again, he doesn't look cross-eyed. I'm looking at him now. I'm just going like, does he look cross-eyed? No, no. The paint apps are really, really lovely. They've set that off to perfection. Looking great. Speaking of great paint apps, the red and white, so smooth. Nice, clear, bold lines. I'm inspecting this figure up and down, looking for blemishes, looking for something to break my heart, but it's not there. This Captain America, especially with the straps around his shoulders so that you can clip the shield on the back there, such a great touch, so much love, care, and attention has gone into making this figure. This might be the only 20th anniversary one I get, I think, because I don't need the Hulk, I don't need Captain America. Oh. Toad. <laughs> when they finally announce Toad, I'll get my hands on him. But in the meantime though, this dude, absolutely wonderful. I love this cap. And then we have Baron Helmet Zemo. A more basic figure, but still really, really nicely done. I think the buck, yeah, looking at it, it's basically the same buck as the Red Skull with the slightly baggy sort of costume, but it's got loads more work being done on here. The main thing that I love that catches my eye is of course the fur, the fur around the boots and the fur around his shoulders. That's classic Zemo. And it's sort of, as I say classic Zemo, it's kind of modern Zemo from the 90s. This is Thunderbolts Zemo. This is going to go perfect leading up my Thunderbolts display with Citizen V kind of behind him, but that's the real power behind the throne. I think the sculpting they've done on the mask, it looks great with the kind of crown sort of bit going around the outside. The fact that they've managed to kind of give what feels like an expression to the face. I don't even know if it is. It, it isn't. The, uh, the eyes aren't really saying anything. It's not like Deadpool where the eyes are sort of a different sort of shape. It's basic, but I think I, I'm in, imprinting so much more emotion onto the character because you can do that because they've done a great job with it. Then just the nice, bright, bold color scheme. The purple pops with the pink, sort of pinky purple, making more of a distinction on the mask. I really, I think it's because I've been looking forward to Baron Zemo for a long time. I've been wanting to get my hands on him. And because of that, now that I've got him, maybe he is kind of an average sort of figure. But because I've been wanting this character, I'm like, oh, yes, the fact that you've just done him justice, well, that's good enough for me. And they really, really have. This is the most perfect rendition of Zemo at the base level. Now they could have done more things. They could have given us the, uh, you know, gruesome unmasked head. That would have looked cool. Or they could have given us the more tea cozy type mask so that you could have him doubling as his father as well. Hopefully we'll get a different, you know, senior Zemo later on. That would be kind of cool. They could have given him a pistol as well, like the classic Hydra Luger. That would have worked really great. So there are more things they could have done to give you that little extra bang for your buck. But they've gone for a more basic kind of approach with this, which considering that he's a standalone figure and not part of a wave, not, not with a builder figure at all, that's a bit of a shame. So I'm saying, Hasbro, you could have gone to a bit more effort. But what we have got is still a great figure. You've got the sword at least, so he's got an accessory that works perfectly well with him. Now, what a lot of people don't like, and I get it as well, he's got his championship wrestling belt around here. And I've checked lots of different art to see, and, and like this is, this is right, this is legit, even the little weird bit on top. But again, it does somewhat limit some articulation. Already you can see I'm bending the top bit there and I, I don't want to do that. So you lose some of the ab crunch. So you want it to be accurate and it is accurate, but because of that, you do lose some movement and whatnot. So even though I love this figure, it's not without its flaws. But then again, when you pose him next to the red skull and crossbones, got a bit of a Hydra display going on, that looks really cool. And because he's such an iconic Marvel villain, this, this fills that gap perfectly. I was really, really anticipating this and to get him and to be pleased with how he looks, I'm really made up. Not all he could have been, but I'm very happy with what we got. So these two together, I can absolutely say that Captain America, he's a five-star Marvel legend, honestly. Now, you do pay more, of course. This is a more deluxe Marvel legend, and that's where it's like, mm, okay, what am I paying for? You get the little backdrop piece, but honestly, I don't really care about that. That's gonna go, it's gonna go in a box, just in a bit of storage. I don't, I don't need that. So what you're paying extra, I feel like, you know, ideally, this would be a basic Marvel legend. A couple of accessories, a head swap, Perfect. That that should be a standard Marvel Legend, but you're paying extra. The box itself does look gorgeous, but I can't give him too many 
plaudits and credits because you're paying extra for it. But still, I will say, if you don't mind paying that extra, the figure you get is absolutely lovely. And then this one, I'm going to say, you know, if Cap is a five star figure, this I would say three and a half because I want to give him more. But actually what you do get for your money is a basic Marvel Legend. It's an existing buck that's been repainted with a bit of extra, and then he doesn't really have any particular exciting extras. He's got another pair of hands, he's got the sword, but that's it. They could have done more, but they kind of pulled back a little bit. Which, you know, you can't. they can't all be amazing figures, although we would like that. But still, a five-star figure and a three-and-a-half-star figure, that's a good day's delivery for me. So guys, thanks very much for watching the review. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think of these two figures? What do you think of the 20th anniversary line? Are you going to pick them up? Which ones are keepers and which ones are sleepers? i got to workshop that. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, gang. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. Guten Abend, Herr Kinder. Alles klar? Ah, alles klar. Very good. Did you enjoy that review of the American big dog, Steven Rogers? Yeah, I thought so. Well, if you did, then go over to the Model Behavior Patreon at patreon.com forward slash model behavior. And you can subscribe and watch all the exclusive videos. And also, if you want to like, share, and subscribe, then you can do. And that way, you will not miss a single episode. But also, if you want to wear a Model Behavior t-shirt, then you can pick one up at teespring.com. Take the link in the description below. Mm, very good. Alles klar. Yeah, 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 yeah.